Gary Patterson has made it clear he wants to return the game. If the, if the setting is right, if the fit is right, Gary Patterson wants to be a head coach in college football again. He told that to Matt Mosley of ESPN Central Texas. The Baylor flagship station, my station, came on right after our show. And I was like, oh, ah, I'm listening in the car. And Gary's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to come back and be a head coach. Does Gary Patterson deserve to be a head coach? Here's the first thing, the first point I'm going to make here. The first point I'm going to make for those of you that I've seen who are like, oh, Gary is, you know, he, he was too much of a hothead or people didn't get along with him or he made a lot of enemies or he had a very tumultuous locker room and the situation was not always perfect. And for Gary, it was never easy. OK, yeah. World renowned musician, musician, Gary Patterson. Sure, whatever. But I, I'm going to give I'm going to give this. And even to those who are saying he's not ready for NIL or transfer portal. If Gary Patterson, listen here, listen. If Gary Patterson's the head coach for TCU in 2022, I still think they're pretty damn good. Again, Sonny Dykes didn't come in with a mass exodus and I'm going to bring all my bags and they're Louie. He didn't use a ton of random players. I mean, you could argue the development, was, but, but, but how much development could Dykes have done in one offseason to turn that roster into a national championship caliber team? I mean, nobody, not a miracle worker, can turn nothing into a national championship program. If Patterson's given another year at TCU in 2022, does he buy himself a lot more time? Does he go to a national championship? Maybe not. But, but does he buy himself a lot more time? Does he develop that team into one that keeps him in, in, in the saddle? And are we having a different conversation about what the, the name Gary Patterson means to college football today? I get it. His last five years at TCU were consistent in that they were bad. Of his last five years, one of them was good. He had one 11 and three season. Um, and then, and that was then, then four years of just complete and utter turmoil. Got fired in the middle of a year. Was that warranted? No. Should TCU have fired this legendary coach who'd been there for 20 seasons in the middle of a year? No. But how did it work out for them? They went to the national championship, right? They, they can become the poster child of, hey, fire a coach a couple weeks early, get on the hunt. I still think they probably get Sonny Dykes, by the, by the way, and they still probably go to a national championship. I don't know if that an effect, had an effect on anything. But you were, you you mistreated the legend. That's it. It's like if the Patriots, and, and it's not a direct comparison, Sonny Dykes has not won five, seven, whatever it is, national championships. But it's if, the, if the Patriots just kicked out Bill Belichick in the middle of the season tomorrow, he has done enough. He's done enough to be fired at the end of the season. Gary Patterson had done enough to be fired at the end of the season, mistreated by TCU. I believe that Patterson has a love for the program. He was at the national championship game. He still shows face. He still comments and talks about TCU. Him and his wife are both huge frog supporters. But you know, when somebody fire, when you get fired from an organization that you put so much into, that you loved so much, and you, they did it in the middle of the season, there's that little part of you that says, you know what? As much as I love you, I'd love even more to beat you. It'd be real fun, it'd be real meaningful if I could beat you. And that would take being in the Big 12. His credentials are enough. His credentials are enough to be at a school like Baylor that is similar enough to TCU that he could win. His credentials are enough to be at a West Virginia where he would go in day one, use his credentials, use what he's done in college football, and he would win. He could go to a Houston and he could win eight or nine games every year, which is going to be tough for anybody to do. And now that they're a Power 5 team, that is. I am confident that Gary Patter Patterson could still do that. We learned that Gary could recruit at a level that was competitive in the Big 12. We learned that Gary Patterson could recruit in a level that was competitive nationally in college football. With Gary, listen to this, with Gary Patterson's players, with Gary Patterson's players, TCU went to the national championship last season. The horses were in the stable under Gary. You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. That was the issue for Gary Patterson, but he still got it. 63 years old. Does he have 10 years left in college football? Sure. I think Gary Patterson has probably 10 years left in college football. We're seeing coaches that go out there and do it for longer and longer now. And if you give him, if you tell Baylor, West Virginia, Houston, hey, I can give you seven years. Most head coaches, almost every head coach doesn't last seven. That's, that's a lifetime at a college football program for a head coach. Coaches aren't lasting seven years anywhere anymore. So, oh, he's old and time's passed him by. Mm, I don't know. The horses were in the stable to win a national championship. Had he been given that next year, does he have the morale? Does he have the, the locker room won over enough to win that national championship? I don't know. 
But I'm telling you what, I think that a Baylor, a West Virginia, a Houston, somewhere in the Big 12, especially if the move is made this offseason, will be where he goes. I don't want to see him at New Mexico. I don't want to see him at, at Boise State or Abilene Christian or any of these. I, I want to see him in the Big 12, and I think that's where he's going to be. Just to get back at that team you love so much there in Fort Worth. And they rip the statue down when he beats when he beats TCU as the head coach of the Baylor Bears in two years. In Amon G. Carter. This has been It Always Will Be. I love you guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow, I guess. I think, yeah, I think we're going to have a show tomorrow. This week's going to be funky. This week is going to be funky with, how, with Halloween. Yeah, great. I'm doing Halloween again. Uh, with Thanksgiving, I'll try to keep you updated on Twitter at LO Big 12. Uh, 10,000 subscribers by January 1st. I'll shave my head. Thankfully, <laughs> we've slowed down a little bit. This has been It Always Will Be. Locked on. Thanks for making it your first listen every single day. Dose Grande.